Welcome back. Uh, today we're just going to play some speed chess, because it's been a while since we've done that. So, without further ado, let's get to doing. It's been much too long. Um, and again, I've been f mostly focusing on, well, just a variety of things. Some having to do with the Stockfish engine. Um, ooh, what's going on here? Alright, this is going to be a gambit, because I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. But the gambit can't be too bad, right? Um, so, some having to do with Stockfish itself. Some having to do with uh, just trying to make sure that I have a stable uh, local leeches environment that I can redeploy at will using Docker. Um, and some of it just not even motivated by open source concerns. Um, so that thing that sounds like an airplane taking off, that's just uh, my chat window here. And I'm trying to troubleshoot what the heck is going on with that. Oh, apparently my browser doesn't at all like something here. I did just install a plugin to keep the monitor on, and apparently that's causing the browser to melt down. So, okay, I'm just going to have to deal with the fact that occasionally my chat window is going to disappear and I can't see what people are saying. Um, I guess that's just going to be a thing. So, I'm going to drop this H6 pawn apparently. Unless I can find some way to hold it and never lose it. Um, so I might be forced to sack an exchange here in a second. Because the next move is obviously queen d2, right? Um, so I've got to get set up to deal with queen d2. I don't have time to shuffle my queen around to try to deal with that. I have to deal with it directly. But this seems to do to foot the bill at least for the moment. Uh, note that there's this pin not there. Here it is. Bishop's move. Uh, oh! Free rook. We'll take it. Then we'll break this pin. And having broken the pin, can then kick the knight. Um, <laughs> well, it uh, seems to be giving back the exchange if I kick it right away. Let's try to complicate things if we can. Um, and if we can't, I guess we just have to go back and kick it this way instead. That way I don't drop the pawn while kicking the knight. Right, so he's going to push h5 and then I just play rook g5. That's not a problem. It all looks very spooky, but it's not actually doing anything. Right, because I just go forward to square with the rook. I don't have to let him just take my pieces. Um, and now I have to try to coordinate an attack on the g3 square. But yeah, I've just been talking about it. I've been trying to learn how to use Docker um, with the latest play framework, with the latest Scala, and so forth. Um, so that's been an adventure in itself. I am so confused as to what to do right now. I want to sack on g3 and have my queen lined up to recapture on g3. That's not happening. Um... Alright, here's a path forward. Force him to take my pawn, and then I get to take it back. Here we go. Of course, this leaves c7 up for grabs, but if he moves his queen away from his king, there's nothing defending his king anymore. So, this can't be bad for black. Oh, but now he's got a nasty pin along this line if I take the pawn. Um, 
That's inconvenient. Fine, I'll take this pawn. You've, you've sold me on it, I'm going to take this and then take that. And then if you take an F7, I kind of have one little trick here. It's always one little thing. All right, and if you do this, instead of letting me take, um, I can set up the trick a different way. I'm still threatening to take on g3, because your pawn is still pinned. So, finally, I activate my pieces. Um, do I take on g3? Does this help me in any way? I doubt it. Um... could always go back to f6 yeah I'm just not seeing any tactics here that immediately decide the game in my favor so I guess I'll take a more patient approach here um, this lets me kick his bishop unless he does that in which case, I'm just going to step my king off this light square, because my king being on a light square seems to be causing a lot of problems. Um, and now that my king's no longer on a light square, I'm at liberty to do things like this and start hitting, like, there's f2, there's the bishop, there's this pawn. Just hit everything at once and see, like, what collapses first. Um... Since I do have a centralized queen, uh, this does make things a lot easier for me. Okay. Um, I'm just going to bear down on the pinned piece while breaking around this side of the board. Perhaps rook g5 was more accurate. I don't know. There's a lot going on in this position. Thankfully, I think there's an increment, but also I think I have a 5 here. So that's another resource at my disposal. Okay, I'm tired of having to deal with this, so we're going to play this way. And just protect the pawns. And he gets his one check in. Oh, but then that's a perpetual. Alright, well played, buddy. Well played. Oh, not bad. Not bad for uh, somebody with that rating. Nicely done. Alright. Next up, let's see who we got. Could have just done d5 instead of r oh that must have been it yeah I should have struck in the center as we can see I'm clearly out of form <laughs> um, yeah we're gonna play Budapest because that's a fun thing to do in Blitz nobody ever sees this coming at least on Lee Chess people never seem to know what this is and case in point oh hey look we're both out of book now. That's exciting. Um, I'm going to go back this way. Alright, and just develop my pieces this way, and, you know, castle and stuff. That can't be too bad, right? Did I say I was going to castle? I think I've changed my mind. I think I've changed my mind. I need to, like, trade off a piece because I'm kind of cramped. Oh, he's not actually kicking me. Um, so, I am going to find a way to trade off one of my pieces here. Um, I'm still debating which way do I castle, if at all. So this denies his knight access to e5 and to g5. Um, 
as well as allowing me to castle and not hang the h7 pawn. Um, okay. This is a weird way for me to activate my pieces, but we'll go with it. So my g8 knight ended up on c6, my b8 knight ended up on f6. Uh, it's just how it went. Um, so I'm just going to set up a battery against the king side this way. Um, my opponent's playing well. If not, I'm in a world of trouble here, no matter what I do. I need to castle. I must castle this way, but it's going to be a disaster. Um, hmm. This is not good. <laughs> Even by my standards, this is pretty not good. Seems like very difficult to recover from. Um, I really feel a need to castle, but I don't see castling either way being a good idea here. Um, okay, so I'm inviting knight d5. I think I should play g6 and then knight g4. Just let all heck break loose. That's been my premise since the beginning here. But also I could take f3 and then do knight d4. Um, now let's do this. And eh, this looks safe enough. <laughs> this looks fun. All right. Um. So there's a lot of tactics here. I think my knight is useful on that side of the board. All right, I'll just move my queen out of dodge. Oh, hey, look, I'm attacking, too. I get to do that. Isn't that great? How did I change? Oh, I've got a special user style I applied. Something I wrote, like, a couple of years back. I've been maintaining over time, although I've not updated it much lately. Um, what? No. You're hang this is like the mother of all forks. One, two, three, four pieces hanging. Except the king's not hanging. You can't hang a king. Well, I can, but you can't. Uh, okay. Well, I'll we'll take that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure rook e4 was not accurate. If there were an accurate move in that position, it would not be rook e4. Okay. Here, let's just develop my knight. Oops. He can take an exchange. How did I not notice that? <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, this is going much better than the last game. Um, Alright. It's just... I don't know where I want my rook. I don't know at all. I might still want to leave it hanging, for all I know. Yeah, this looks fine. Just put it here. <sighs> oh, this hangs this pawn. I guess that's not the end of the world, but... Um, probably what's going to kill me here is that I have no time left. So, 
you can win a point by liquidating everything on d4. Um, didn't think he would do that. So now knight g3 is on tap yet again. Um, I don't know if I actually execute on it. This is confusing. Yeah, we're just going to pull back the other knight. Worst case, I have a perpetual, but um, probably knight g3 is just crushing. Okay, we'll go... I guess I'll go back here. This could have gone better. This position's tricky. Oops, I hung a knight. Great. It's lovely. Well played. 10 out of 10 would play again. <laughs> uh, fine. Whatever. So I'm hitting two pieces at once, right? The art of the double attack is a pretty nice art in chess. Um, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do here, so I'm sacking. And then I'm going to try to play rook d2 and hope that there's something positive there. Uh, and there's not, because he has rook e2 now. Oh, except rook e2 drops the f1 rook. Oh, so he's got to do, like, queen e2. Okay. I dig it. Bingo. All right. Not bad. But wow, looks like all the people are out here tonight. We got some good opposition. I should try this Friday night chess stuff. Um, apparently you get some pretty good opposition this way. Here. Also, I probably shouldn't be playing this opening that I'm not too intimately familiar with. This is a London, right? They call this the London, or am I mistaken about that? where you just put the pawn on d4, the bishop on f4, and it's just some boring positional thing where no tactic will ever surface to surprise you. Like, you'll never just hang something right in the opening here. Um, he said fasci facetiously. Yeah, this is going pretty well. But also, this can't be good for my general learning of openings. Um, I should learn stuff that's not trappy, um, but it's just more solid, I guess. So... I'm concerned about knight b5, which is incoming, unless I like play a6. Um, I could do queen a3 straight away, but that's kind of cowardly. Uh, so I'll play this instead anyway. Oh, um, yeah, let me open up to challenges. Um, sorry, I forgot to do that before the stream, and I'm actually kind of in a mood to accept challenges if they're offered. Um, which is not my typical style, because typically I let uh, Lee Chess itself decide who my opponent should be. Um... But I guess today I'm in a magnanimous mood, so... Um, Alright, so I want this pawn. So I'm going to play b4, and then I'm going to wait for his knight to move, and then I'll take the pawn. It's a really profound concept. Actually a pretty common one in the Peerts. Um Right, so I said I was concerned about knight 
uh, B5. Knight B5 is coming, but I'm surviving it here. Um, I'm considering a queen sack. A very positional queen sack. It's not terrible, but there have definitely been better queen sacks. So, Alright, so we both got a pawn. This is just normal London theory, you know? Here, let me fianchetto. Uh, let's see. Well, you haven't offered the challenge yet, and right now my username is uh, blocking the challenges, but I'll open that up. Like, if you challenge me to a five-hour base game with like 35 second increment or something I'm probably not going to accept it but um, yeah if you challenge me with something reasonable I'll probably take it um, okay we're just going to push this Uh, okay, so I'm surprised you let me just get away with that pawn push, because now I can just play this like a King's Indian, just throw all my pieces on the king's side and let the fun ensue. Alright, so plan fun is going to continue here. Do I play knight f4? Or do I play something else? I'm just trying to find, like, how does he think that I'm hanging something here? I don't get it. Let's see. So I want to open leechess.org over here and go to my preferences. Alright, a4. I kind of want to take an e4. I actually want to do this, though. Knight f6 might have been even stronger. Um, I saw this, and this was looked much too tempting to pass by, but in retrospect, knight f6 is probably a cleaner way to go. Alright, free pawn. Easy peasy. Alright, so where do I go to privacy... Um, yeah, allow other players to challenge. Alright, cool. Free pawn. Alright, and then just... Well, I could trap the rook now. Or it's already... Tra well, it is technically already trapped, but to actually capture it, I'd have to move a couple pieces here. Um, okay, so let's do this first, and then fully ensnare this rook, and then we could play bishop d7 next and then just take it. Now that's a really nice bishop I have on c8. I don't want to give it away. I'd much rather keep the bishop, but... Um, this seems to be what I have to do. Oh, right. I just hung up on. Because I'm great at chess. Alright, so... Now I'm just gonna go into full cheese mode. Um, and maybe I can find a tactic to save this. Probably not, but... You know, maybe I can find something. Um... Here, let's play an endgame. Only because I'm not surviving this outside of an endgame. He's got everything around his king adequately defended by the knight, so I have to kick the knight. No matter what that involves. And here, kicking the knight involves some things I really didn't want to play, but I didn't have a choice. Also, this is a pretty horrendous endgame. So, um, don't expect me to win it.
So I have to get my king over to defend this damn pawn so I can free my bishop to cheese. But bishop cheese isn't going to do very much either. Um, other than just look intimidating. But yeah, no, this is not working in any respect of the word. I'd rather have my bishop on e5, but there's no way to get there. So I have to actually go back to c7, because this just this position's awful. Um, and then my king can try to fight against these pawns, but that's also completely hopeless. Yeah, we're just going to concede that. Well played. Extraordinarily well played for an 1800. Very well done. Alright, so yeah, feel free to challenge me. Um... Yeah, I went as rook free. I made one bad move, and it was all over. Although, arguably, uh, playing an opening I don't know is probably a bad move, too. Um, but okay, for people looking to challenge me, I never set up a command for this, but there's my profile. So you can go there and issue a challenge, and... I heard the noise, and we got some challenges here, and I think this is our friend Kapoor's. 3-0. Alright. Good luck. Uh, I'm going to have to remember there's no increment here, so I'm going to have to pick up the pace a bit. Alright. Which means less commentary. It means I'm going to really have to just focus on the pace of the game. Uh, let's see. I should have taken here. Just bluffing you there. You could that was a free pawn. Yeah. I was hoping I could bluff him, but no such luck. He took it. <laughs> Alright. Got a rematch though. He's playing my pet opening. Playing my pet opening might be dangerous. Since there's a chance I might know it. Although I don't know this variation, so there is that. Um, I wonder. I wonder. There's a lot going on here. Um, this doesn't give up anything other than the pawn, and I don't need that pawn. Um, let's see, what have I missed? You're the best player on your chair. That's not... Yeah, that's a pretty cool accomplishment. It's not bad. Well, I'm hoping you're the only chess player on your chair. There we go. Now I got my smack talking engaged here. Uh, or some people might call it wit. Uh, so I just want to put the stuff like here, here, and there.
but that's much too slow. I don't have time for that. Um, well, now I might. My bishop does nothing on that diagonal, so let's pull it back this way. This is hideous, but other than that, it looks fine. Right, so I gotta move my queen out of danger. Or I could have just taken the knight, but this looked too tempting to pass by. Also, welcome. Alright, we got a rematch offer. Alright, we're gonna play Sicilian, because why not? Alright, I don't know this variation. Apparently it's supposed to be a thing, but I don't know all the stuff. I just know you, like, put the pieces out on squares and stuff happens. I don't know if I'm supposed to play, like, b6 or d6 or just never play any of that. Or I'm actually curious what people think about. Uh, this is the con Sicilian, right? The K-A-N. I've heard about it, read about it. Don't remember a thing, but um, doesn't look bad. I've oh, got to play that b5. All right, I'll keep that in mind for next time. Um, here, this blocks his rook. So now I've created this terrible pawn structure, which is going to be a pain in the rear end to defend. Um, just keep developing my pieces and hope that a tactic crops up in my favor. Alright, let's pull the bishop back. I so want to put my pieces on better squares here, but it's tricky. He who captures first loses ground. Hey, what's up, Rick? How's it going? Uh, weekend's finally here. So here we are, just playing some speed chess. Trying not to make mistakes. I think, what was it, the first couple games here I just blew it pretty badly. and I think I'm starting to get into form again, despite not having played in a few weeks. Uh, I mean, sure, I've been doing puzzles and such on and off, but that's hardly the same thing. Um... Okay, let's kick this. It has to go back here, right? And then when it goes back here, I just attack it again. Um, right, but now I can trade my knight for this and just... Here we go. This is beautiful, right? We've got this nice armada of pawns all lined up. We've got the flying V. Something I've only once done in tournaments. Just put all your pawns in this massive V shape and hope that something positive happens. Generally it's not bad, but... Um, let's see... But yeah, awesome to see Rack here. Uh, he plays a variety of uh, games on his channel, so go check him out when you have a chance. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we just got through watching part of the SGDQ speedrun. Uh, so, SGDQ, Summer Games Done Quick. Um, it's a group of speedrunners who are performing... Um, speed runs for charity, so it's a means of collecting. Um, uh, I think the charity they're raising money for this occasion is um, the Doctors Without Borders, the international organization. I'm, I've heard a lot. I've heard its name quite often. I don't know much about the organization itself, but. It seems like a very good cause. I've heard quite a bit of positive press about it. Um, but yeah, the Summer Games Done Quick is um, 
some it's a convention where speedrunners will meet up and um, play games in front of a very large audience. The games that they've practiced for months on end, and they've had to submit all their uh, runs into um, well, however their governance body decides who's going to run for that particular event. So we just watched uh, the TazBot, the tool-assisted speedrun bot. Um, I was playing through Celeste. Uh, that being a PC game, um, largely about a character who has to deal with anxiety. And um, learns a whole lot about herself as she does so. Um, so uh, we just got through watching... Um, a lot of really clever things happen, um, and a great deal of money was raised for charity, and that's a very good thing. And separately, uh, we just both happened to enjoy Rack playing and myself watching um, uh, the game of Celeste, because it is just truly this beautiful work of art. And so, yeah, you can go out to his channel and check out when he plays that. Yeah, Tass is awesome. It's something I've tried to get into and just struggled badly with because um, I'm much too ambitious in my aims with it. And I just need to uh, calm down and take a uh, look at what's, uh, I don't know, what's most easy to accomplish there. Good game, well played, etc. Yeah. Um, so we've actually got more challenges here. Um... That's cool. Hey, look, here's one with an increment. Let's do that. Ah, oh, whew. Okay. Calming down. <laughs> I forgot last game I had no increment, so that could have been bad. <laughs> I know I was pushing myself to move quickly, but um, I should have been moving faster for that kind of uh, situation. Yeah, so... I had a similar phenomenon uh, with my own chess performance where I would be excellent at speed chess and terrible at slower chess, or excellent at just solving puzzles out of books, but then when it came to apply things to actual games, um, I'd find myself frequently just getting uh, destroyed on the chessboard. And the remedy for that after a few years of suffering from it, um, was to get good at slower chess and start playing things like correspondence and playing much slower games. And then, um, uh, over time, I would learn that you can't just tactic your way out of everything. You actually have to, like, form plans and activate your pieces and do all these things that books tell you to do. Um... And that takes a considerable amount of experience, which you can only gain from actually... Oh, look there, I hung my bishop. That's embarrassing. Um, so, yeah, it takes experience, which you can only gain from playing the slow games and then analyzing them afterwards and finding out what you did right and what you did wrong and being brutally honest about all your analysis. And it's very difficult to do. Um, yeah, for a while I was very hooked on the Jerry Silman books, and it seems quite pedagogical, I think. And I don't know whether the pedagogy itself is enough, um, but there's certainly nothing wrong with it. I just don't know if that's enough for a player to actually latch onto and claim that they understand it unless they have the experience to accompany uh, the pedagogy. Yeah. There's a lot... Oh, I'm sorry. The one thing I recommend to a lot of people as well is if there's a convenient way to do so, join a real-life chess club. You will learn so much more playing at a real club than you will playing online. It's, it's night and day, really. Um... If nothing else, you'll meet people who can introduce you to more people and more people and just network 
meeting a whole bunch of people who are experts at various aspects of the world of chess and not just playing the game but you'll learn you'll meet so many people throughout that um, and um, you might find that there's much more to chess than actually just playing it uh, so this probably dropped like a piece here somewhere but I'm playing too fast as and I bluffed my opponent actually I played g5 in a rush because I didn't want to sit here and calculate for two minutes, which is what I should have been doing. Um, but I bluffed my opponent and probably got away with something I shouldn't have right there. Um, and part of the reason I did that is just to put on a show here, as opposed to trying to focus on playing the best move every move and then drop all the conversation and drop all the everything that makes this good and fun and interesting to stream. Um, so I'm going to trade this. I don't like trading pieces because that makes this less fun to watch, but uh, here I think I really have to do it. I didn't think he'd do that. Like, I knew he could, but, um, I'm trying to understand what motivated my opponent to do what they just did. Because there's this obvious move, and there's knight e4, which is equally obvious. And he's saying he doesn't care about either of those two moves. Um, less obvious than both of those, and better, is just pushing this pawn and trapping the bishop. And my position's just better. This is the sort of thing you'll learn with experience that, like, making these one move threats and such can be very exciting in Blitz um, uh, and Speed Chess, but you'll only, like, learn to better evaluate a situation by having to deal with uh, longer, slower games that evaluation was not just based on me calculating tactics of what's going to happen 50 moves from now. That's uh, me drawing on experience of previous games I've had and a lot of suffering in those games. Um, and just trying to make this game a little bit less suffering-y. Yeah, another practical experience thing. Putting my queen on the open file is not a very good practical move for white here. Um, and you might ask what else to do, but um, there's some things... Just having that uh, intuition or experience of where to look for better moves and where it doesn't really matter as much is something you only learn by playing a lot of slower games, I think. Or studying a lot of good games. That helps, too. Oh, shoot. I thought I had a queen trap. That's not a queen trap. Okay. I miscalculated. Um, uh, backing up. Uh, okay, we'll put this on a good square. Which we place is troublesome in regards to learning. Yeah, absolutely playing, uh, um... I think you kind of need both. Um, so you can learn a tremendous amount from just watching what strong players do. Um, you can also learn a lot by making mistakes against strong players, and they will punish you for those mistakes. Uh, um, there is always this concept of talent that nobody's ever really defined or measured or it's just some concept that it's not a very practical one to deal with um, 
But if there is such a thing as talent, and a lot of people do believe there is, um, then in theory you'd be able to just master the game by just watching strong people and emulating what they do. Um, probably it's not that easy. Okay, we're going to lock this up. Only because I'm winning this pawn, and since I'm winning this pawn, like the entire game's pretty easy from here on out. Because, um, like, here, he doesn't have a way to target my pawn on my side of the board. So I'm just going to shuffle my knight around and find a way to attack one of his pawns. And here he finally plays his pawn onto the dark square. Not surprising, because it's a very difficult endgame, but... Um, again, he doesn't have any way to attack my pawns, and I have ways to attack his pawns. Uh, so, it's an imbalanced situation right there. Um, I'm going to sack this, because I think I'm still winning. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> that does not work. That's an interesting endgame, though. That's really interesting. I feel, pardon me, uh, I might be glad to accept a rematch and such, but I'm very curious what happened here. We were both in extreme time pressure. We were playing much, we were playing a blitz game, and we got beyond move 40, which is also pretty rare. Move 40 is usually the time by which um, everything's been decided in the game. Um, usually by that point, somebody's made some critical error and it's all over. Regardless, like, how fast or slow the time is on the clock. Usually by move 40, there is a decisive result. Here, this was a very close game throughout. Apparently, h5 was not a good move on my part. At least, so says the computer. I would prefer the... Oh. I could just check the king, and then take the pawn. I played this pawn forward in quite a hurry, because I was giving commentary, and I didn't see this. Um... And, I mean, the computer says that this is fine, too. Um, but it's just not nearly as accurate as winning a pawn outright. Because I didn't, did not expect my opponent to just give me a pawn. Um, oh, yeah, no, I was right back here. Yeah, I dropped the bishop. That was not so good. Later on... Okay, this is interesting. So I put my knight forward. I was expecting this pawn push. And then I'd have to retreat my bishop back. And then I'm just running away as my pieces are falling off the board. And I thought that was my best thing I could do. Apparently, better was to just go for the gold here. Um, I'm surprised that works. But how did I get here again? Like... F5, I know F5 is not the most accurate move in this game, or in that position, but it's something I've played quite a bit in Blitz. Okay, yeah, no, I'm just in poor shape throughout this opening. Um, so we get this end game, and here, like, I have tons of experience playing this sort of position. This particular, these pawns over here, these pawns here, these pawns on this side. These pawns, uh, some of these kind of more advanced here. I've played um, this Rui Lopez opening quite a bit, so I've seen this and or encountered this in Blitz a number of times and have a number of clever ideas, but also I'm building on. I think Bill Roberti wrote a book about winning chess endgames, and he covers things like bishop and knight endgames and how you want to activate your pieces, and I think a number of other masters. Well, Bill Roberti, I don't think is a master, but a number of masters have also written books uh, about the end games. I think even Grandmaster Lev Albert wrote some books about um, what was his series called? I forget. The last book in the series is called Just the Facts, and it covers a number of fundamental end games, but I don't think it covers this one. But I think. Like, there's so many grandmasters and international masters that have written excellent books on the subject of endgames. Um, I'll have to try to get a list. I really should make a list uh, of what these books are that I've read over time. Because it's been much too long since I've read them. But, um, anyway, the point is, um, 
My bishop should be like on this half of the board. I have a space advantage. If I get my bishop behind the pawns and I haven't done anything seriously wrong, I should be okay here. Uh, let's just forget the size of the board with 3D pieces for... Yeah, when I log out and log in and stuff, that there's a known issue there, I think. And I don't think there's a easy way to address it. It has to do with browser-side cookies and trying to optimize for performance, and I don't think there's a way to address it, but... Um, yeah, no, I fully considered 94. I just panicked, because, like, I saw this. I didn't see a continuation. And I saw this is getting pretty dicey here. Um, but the computer likes this, apparently. Like, I take here, this queen pops on over this side of the board, and I don't know what's going on. This scared me. Um, probably I just have this here, but I don't know. Um... So, I was curious, though, what got me going in this, uh, looking at the analysis was, what was it here? Yeah, I was going to show, like, this sort of position. Uh, clearly I'm winning the G-pawn. Um, yes, all my pawns are on dark squares, for the most part. And so, in general, that would be a liability. Except your bishop has no way to access my half of the board. Um, unless you can orchestrate a pawn break like you did in the game. But I had so much play in the meantime while you were making that break. And it's just because, again, I have a space advantage. My pawns are farther up the board. And this was the only pawn break you could do, and you did it as you should. Um, probably I could just push this directly and not have to wait for you to push. I wasn't... I saw that I could not push this, and I'd be okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's no reason for me to push that. In fact, with the computer suggesting just I should drop the knight right over here, and the rest is pretty easy, because if you take the knight, I'm still up the pawn. And if you don't take the knight, uh, your bishop is constricted by my knight. Um, so that's pretty clever. I didn't see that. So I was just trying to find a slower way to, like, put my knight on a good square. And I did put this on the light square, like I promised. Um, but yeah, the key point is that this bishop has no way to get around the white pawns to access the base of any of these pawn chains, because I've been extremely careful not to trade off pawns that open up this position. Um, so, like, when I did this bishop for knight exchange here, I did that bearing in mind that your bishop could not access like my g5 pawn or c7 pawn or a7 and all that. Um, so even if you hadn't like dropped the g pawn outright, oh I'm sorry that was the other thing I wanted to look at here. Um, so I was debating, um, after I played a6 I was debating how I could have done this instead. And this would have provoked you to move this pawn forward, and if you've gone two squares, I think I just exchange here directly, and now you've got a pawn. Um, well, I'm sorry, now I have a fortress. There's no way for you to break that fortress. If you go one, um, I think I'm forced to take here. And this is what had me concerned. I think still here I have a fortress because... Um, if you push this pawn, it's very easy for me to attack the pushed pawn in, com in combination with the center pawn being pretty prone to attack. Um, who takes first loses ground? I should just go back. Yeah, no, of course. This is much better for black than what I just looked at. Um, people ask about chess improvement. The answers are usually something along grind tactics until you hate chess and study endgame or something. Openings are pretty much a waste of time until you've played in tournaments. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, this endgame was just much more unclear than I thought it was. Oh, but what caught my attention is, like, here I should be completely winning. This 
I should not have gotten in any trouble after what I did. Um, okay, and yeah, while there might be tactical means to resolve this, the positional mean to resolve this is just play h4. And I what had me stumped is can I win after playing h4? Um, I think for me to try to win this, I'd need to put the knight on b7. To get the knight to b7, well, we see, like, I can't get here from anywhere other than d8. To get to d8, well, the easiest route is through h6 and f7. So, assuming white just shuffles, because I don't see what else white can do here. White protects their center pawn. I go back. Um... I push a5 anyway, that's a free pawn, but now I take this. And so the question is, can white somehow improve upon that situation? Like, this would protect the c-pawn, but then I push this, and I'm breaking anyway. And I thought that this would work out, but there were two things, um, there were two things back here when I didn't push h4. There are two reasons. One, I wasn't sure if I could get the knight to c7. Two, or I'm sorry, to b7. And two, even if I did manage to get the knight to b7, I wasn't sure that that would be enough to win. Um, so I ended up moving the knight instead, which ended up, and I moved it to a bad square. And you immediately pounced on it correctly, as you should have. And I don't know, maybe I have to play this here. Um, at least maybe this makes my life a lot easier. The idea being you take my pawn, I push. Um, so I'm trying to anchor this bishop into the corner. What in the world is going on in this position? Um, because, okay. like, my pushing h3 is a big, big, big threat here, and white doesn't really have a threat. Hmm. But yeah, when you push that h-pawn, I panicked, which is a big mistake on my part. Um, um... I should not have panicked. Um, I should have more experience in these endgames, and that's why I'm analyzing this here and looking at things that didn't even happen in the game. Because, like, this could happen in another game. Um, so... Black has to move here. I think that's Black's problem that black doesn't have any spare moves in this position. So while h3 itself was a big threat, um, white has a number of threats too. So pushing the pawn um, is not decisive in black's favor, so black should refrain from doing that. Um, but instead, I don't know. If I can't push h4 and like box in your bishop here, um, probably best is my just taking this pawn. And, like, this is wild. And because this is so wild, um, now, the engine still evaluates this as minus three, meaning that black is still considerably better here somehow. I don't even believe it, but, um, well, no, I had to play what I played in the game is what that comes down to. But had I seen that, I should have just played h4 myself. Because, like, taking here, I was concerned I might lose this. H if I'd played this pawn up there, at least I wouldn't have that concern about losing. But then again, I'm playing for an audience, and I want to see any of three results happen. So, that's where there's a conflict between playing for fun, playing for an audience, and playing to try to win. Um, so I should have pushed to stop you from pushing, but assuming I'm in this mode where I'm letting things happen, um, either I should spend more time trying to look at this and see if I could win that with knight b7, 
or I should just let this happen and um, having let this happen is there a way I can still win this by force because yeah you played as you should have you protected this here um, and yeah I expected this to be forced and I've seen this position in books too so I think black's activity more than makes up for um, the fact that this is an open position with a bishop. So what you probably saw was that if you take here that this is check and I get to take the, either of these two pawns and both, in fact I should take the center pawn and the reason I should take the center pawn is that once you push this um, I should be able to blockade this f pawn somehow. Like, okay, there's a square. That's a light square. This is a check. I go back. My knight's on a light square. My king's on a light square. This uh, can't be broken. I mean, you could like get your king around here, uh, but once the king starts moving that way, I've got like two connected past pawns running up the side of the board. So um, that's. Again, you'll find endgame theory about this sort of stuff. There's plenty of authors who write about endgames. Um, and they'll cover this stuff in much greater detail than I can afford to. But you saw at least that I've got like this check, and then I'm taking a pawn, and that's enough to dissuade you from going into this line where you take the pawn in the first place. But um, yeah, allowing me to push is just disastrous because of the tactic that happened in the game. So this is actually forced and white has to suffer. I don't know how white tries to save this, but um, it's going to be difficult, uh, especially because black's got this pawn running. Um, but this is the challenge. Um, have we considered four-player chess? Well, um, to your question, github.com this is where the source code is reposited. So if I go to the issues list and search for variant, um, let's see, where is it? There's a thing here about most popular variants. Give me a second, I'll find it here. Um, in which there's been like dozens and dozens of comments about um, oh no, can I even find it, uh, can I find it this way, can I find it, what kind of variant, uh, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to find that, but, like, there is a discussion of variants there, and that discussion talks about, like, every possible variant, basically, and, yeah, four-player chess is somewhere in the list. Um, but I'm not saying, like, we're doing it tomorrow or anything. Um, yeah, the developers do consider a lot of ideas, um, but that doesn't mean, like, that we have anywhere near the resources to make it happen. Um, for what it's worth, I did assist with the deployment of a Relay Chess server, which is authenticating using Lee Chess. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, okay. Okay, buddy, what's going on here? This doesn't look smart. Um, yeah, there's the one. So, my thought is that if I can make a Relay Chess server and Relay Chess is like a super complicated variant, but anybody can make their own variant chess server and use Lee Chess logins with it. So, um, so even if Lee Chess, uh, the website, doesn't have your favorite variant, you could go make a server that uses Lee Chess logins and um, make your own rating system and make your own four-player thing and whatever. Um, 
and uh, the challenge there, of course, would be getting people to find your site. Although you could heavily link to it in the forums, like they did with the Bug House Lee Chess server. Um, see, I missed many, many a comment there. I'm trying to catch up with my... I keep playing games, too. Let's see, so what was this? Message deleted... Oh yeah, four-player stuff... Um, I'm going to liquidate this here. Only because I'm actually concerned that I've messed up and I need to trade stuff off. Although I can't afford to trade this because that helps us work into the game. So I have to leave this on the board. Now I push this. And then once he pushes, then I trade the bishops and then I take here. Or, as the case may be, maybe I push forward instead. Oh boy. I bet he did not calculate any of this. Just kidding. He calculated some of it, but there's no way he could have gotten through all of this calculation. There's just too much here. So we're going to play the most challenging response. The one that potentially could blow up the most in his face if he miscalculated anything. And I'm only playing in a hurry because I'm down 45 seconds. If this were actually a tournament game, I'd spend my time looking at it. But um, here, because it's a blitz game and because I'm down, well, not 45, I'm down 30. But still, that's enough for me to say that I should be blitzing things out instead of calculating. Um, so that looks like I'm... I've took a pawn. I'm threatening to take another pawn. And this is all I observed, is that if he trades the rooks, he doesn't have a win. Or not an immediate win. And I have plenty of threats here. So this should be an, at least enough to be tricky. He might have a win. He might have a forced win, in fact. But um, it was above my ability to find. Um... I wasn't going to regret trading those rooks and such, because this looks very positive for me here. But there's a real chance that I played a uh, completely losing lemon of a move there. Um, but I just didn't have time to analyze it, because this is speed chess. So I'm debating, do I check or do I go back? Going back is safe. Checking is ambitious. Checking doesn't lead anywhere because he puts his king forward. And my king's actually subject to a lot of attacks, so I'm going to pull back. Again, bearing pressure on the center pawn. So if I can just hold C or C2 and G2, um, then I really don't have anything to worry about here. And that's why I was so willing to trade pieces. Um, backing up here. Maybe if he kept the bishops on, he might have had winning chances. Or maybe even a forced win. But without the bishops on here, there's no way to break through this fortress that I've got. So, I could blunder. He could still have some way to, if, to win if I blunder, but I'm not losing this by force. Um, okay, you move my your king, I check you. Alright, so, the main thing is I don't want his king advancing on the king side here. Not that it can go to g4, but, um, I don't want his king anywhere up on this side of the board. You could put his king anywhere else, just not on, like, this side. Um. A weakness is only a weakness if your opponent has the ability to exploit it. And I don't think... So I'm debating here, should I be pushing h4 or not? Um, I don't think it gains me anything to push it, so... I think the answer is no. Alright. Uh, 
we're going to try to spook him a bit. Yeah, he's not spooked. Alright, so now what? Um... YOLO! <laughs> this is a terrible practical decision. But it's so exciting. Um, I immediately regret it. This is fun. <laughs> Alright, so let's see where this goes. This could have gone a lot better for so many reasons, but this is what we play for the audience. If I were actually trying to win this, I would not play such ridiculous moves. Um, or rather, if I'm playing this like over-the-board tournament, I'd have to settle on playing something much more sensible. Something that doesn't like get me destroyed for having played it. Um... Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, this could have gone better. This could have gone much better. Whatever. You've got three queens. Oh, he's actually got the mate in one. Oh, I was playing against an equal rated opponent. Oops. I forgot I was playing games in the pool and not just playing against challenges. Let's look at our challengers. Alright, so we've been patiently waiting for a three-minute game. Um, oh, we got two three-minute games. Huh? Wait, no, this is a one-minute. There's a three-minute. We'll take them in the order they appear in the list. Sorry for having forgotten about the challenge queue there. Wing Gambit. Just winging it. Alright, so... Now, I don't know this Gambit. Um, so that was a pretty successful bluff. I think. Or was it not a successful bluff? I don't even know. Um, it feels like that was a successful bluff, but I'm not sure how I'll ever know. Okay, we're going to push this pawn. It seems like white is much better here. I'm with you. As long as I don't like hang all my stuff. Seems like I'm in pretty decent shape. So, okay, he got a pawn back. I got a knight. It's possible I might have terribly miscalculated something and there might have been a much easier solution to my dilemmas here, but... I don't know. This seems fine. Not bishop e3. Oh, wait. What? Bishop e3 here? Bishop e3. Oh, no. Bishop d3? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the question's about. When I get checked on e4. Oh! Bishop e3 is legal. Yeah, that would have been much better. Um, oops. Okay, well, this is fun. Yeah, that, that was rather legal. I'm not accustomed to playing positions where my king is on e2. Um, I'll try to bear that in mind in the future. If I f next time I find my king on e2. Yeah, now we got a fun game on our hands. Yeah. Alright, so... There are checks everywhere in this position, but... I think I've got them covered. 
Like there's no queen g5, queen g6, queen g4, queen f4, queen e5. All these things are covered. So I'm just attacking a knight um, and developing a piece. Oh, there's bishop d6. I missed a check. But hopefully I'm still okay. Uh, I have to go back. Okay. And then there's that ch uh, right. So I might as well develop this. Oh god. I'm not calculating very well. That might have been still my best move. Just given how many things I'm hanging in this position. Um, and what's causing me to stress over this position is that there's no increment. So, again, any mistakes I made could have been avoidable if we just had an increment. Um, and if I weren't just playing the silliest moves that occurred to me. Um, so, okay, we're only down nine points. We can come back from this. <laughs> How hard could this be to recover from, right? There's just the mate in one threat. Allowing it might be the best thing in this position, honestly. But, um, no, we're just going to develop. See, we get the knight back. We're threatening to win a rook. It's all fine. This is all going according to plan. Um, see, we're only down eight points now. This is great. Or is that six? That's six. We're only down six. Yeah. We got this. No problem. We're going to just win this on time. Easy peasy. Oh, he lets me move the knight. Okay. Just keep shuffling pieces until hopefully something positive happens. It does not help that... Um, yeah, I have to retreat here and give up some material there. Or I have to give up my H-pawn to try to keep some pieces on the board. Right, that was the concern here, is that, again, I'm forced to trade. Uh... There's a pawn. Ha! Alright, got him. Gotta pull out that expert cheese. Alright, so this is gonna take some world-class cheese to win this. Alright, so we pulled it out. Totally deserved that. Not really. This is why I recommend we actually use an increment so we don't get in silly time scrambles. But um, So I was playing bad moves throughout the game due to the pressure on the clock. And then I was able to use the time I accumulated at some point in the game um, to um, cheese the end game. And that's because I've played way too much Blitz Chess. Um, so I'm pretty decent at finding cheese. Like, that thing where I just hung my bishop outright, and he pre-moved bishop takes knight. That's the sort of cheese that you learn for playing too much Blitz Chess online. Um, Okay, so I just want a piece in the opening. And I'm up time. And like I said, like, mistakes happen if you're playing without an increment. Because, like, it becomes as much about the clock as it does about the position on the board. Yeah. Alright, we're going to just take... Here, go take my queen. That's what you wanted, right? <laughs> 
So now I've got a rook, bishop, knight, and pawn for the queen. So I think I came out ahead on that. Um, but yeah, my opponent did get my queen. I got to castle, which is what I was really aiming for. Just going to pull back. Keep things simple. Um, he finds one complicating move here. And that is complicating. Because uh, he could trade. Um... I'm going to activate my pieces. Um, but yeah, at that point, like, that sort of cheese, I don't know. That's the sort of skill that comes in the same way that, um, like, if you're doing your all your speed run practice, you'll pull off some tricks that look pretty insane. Um, and here, I'm just pulling off, like, Again, nonsense that's kind of similar to stuff I've done in the past. Here, let's just put all the pieces on active squares. You take my pawns, and I'll bear all four of my pieces on this poor pawn here. And we'll see um, if that pawn can survive against all of my pieces. Spoiler, it won't. But, um... Yep. So there's womb bishop, there's a knight. Now we're just going to bring both of my rooks to bear on that. And we'll see if a queen can take on all these pieces put together. Um, but also he just moves his king, and now I've got all my pieces just attacking his side of the board. Um... So take the free pawn, and then put the rook back here and resume operation. Let's see, so what now? I want to put the rook on the second rank here, but that gives up the knight if I do it immediately. Um, so I'm going to have to do a bit of magic to shuffle this. Fine, we'll hit the queen. Oh god. He could have done that in the other order too, which is the really depressing part about it. I just allowed that shot either way. I should have saved my king first. Uh, that's how you know you're out of shape. But also trying to impress people. <laughs> uh, that didn't quite work, did it? Uh, so. I just got bored, if that can be believed. That was a pretty boring position. Uh... Yet another benefit of just letting Lee Chess automatically pick your opponent is that you tend not to get those boring games. Where you've just, like, outclassed your opponent throughout the game and then they find a, a tactic to save it. Because if as much as that might work in 3 minute without an increment, if we were to put the increment back on the game, um, or if you were to play with... Um, I don't know, slower games. Um, your opponents aren't going to just F up like I did there. They're not going to do that every single time. And that's a thing I've learned from experience, uh, that I can't just rely on my opponents to make mistakes. I have to actually try to play good moves. And that took a lot of experience to appreciate, that chess isn't just about quickly making fun moves. Um, that there is another dimension to the game that you can learn through experience and it makes the game more rewarding and enjoyable for those people who choose to pursue it which is like I don't know 2% of chess players or something 
I'm being too harsh. It's probably more like 10%. The other 90% really don't um, pursue it in that same way. And they don't observe um, all that chess has to offer. But are instead looking at this flashy world where um, uh, what's it where you'll hear commentators talk about 10 seconds, 5 seconds, 3 seconds, and they, they saw these, say these things over and over during a broadcast. Um, and like that's the thing that the spectator will focus on. It's not like the old days where you'd have to catch up on the chess game either in the newspaper or over the radio or whatever. Um, where there's like the U.S. versus USSR matches, there is the Kasparov versus Deep Blue matches. There's these wonderful games that have fantastic analysis and um, just a lot of deep thought going into it, and it gets a lot of public attention anyway. Um, and then these days, you just have like people playing these speed chess games, even in real life. And you'll see them like mashing the clock and banging it very hard. And you'll, on occasion, even top grandmasters have left their own blood on the clock. And it's like, it's there's something that the spectator's not understanding about this game. Um, and then you're on to the next game. There's just a whole lot that spectators and Enthusiasts for the game don't appreciate in general, probably because they don't have an opportunity to. Okay, we're just going to liquidate here. This looks excellent for me. I think I'm winning. Let's trade this, trade that, break here. Um. And this is where I was going to throw on queen b6. Um, let's see. What do we got? Are the center pawns more important? Are there less of them? As there are less of them, once the queen's gone, it's easier to reach the back rank. Um, so, yes, um, a lot of chess software will tell you, and a lot of masters will say from experience, that a center pawn is worth more than a pawn on the side of the board, except in cases where that's not the case. Um, like end games where um, having a pawn on the flank is useful because it distracts your opponent's pieces. Um, and there are so many exceptions to the rule, which is why I hesitate to give it as a general rule, but uh, wait, how's this going? That's how that's going. I just hung a piece. Oops, whatever. It was fun. So much for winning. <laughs> uh, although I have this move, which is kind of fun, right? I've got so many fun moves here that even if objectively I'm lost, um, in a practical sense, I might be one. Um, but yeah, pawns in the center can... Like, this pawn is discouraging his knight from moving anywhere. And because the knight can't move, the bishop can't move. Because the bishop can't move, he can't castle, and that sort of thing. Now, it happens the bishop can actually go this way instead, but... Center pawns uh, certainly deter your opponent's pieces more effectively. Alright, so... Yeah... I think this actually worked out okay, somehow. But what I played was probably totally unsound. And wildly uncalled for. Which is kind of just how I play on this channel. It's good fun. We're exploring the moves that nobody else would dare to play because they're bad. <laughs> um, 
But then we try to find good moves to justify it. So. Um, my queen is attacked. My rook is attacked. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll take his rook. He'll take my rook. I'll take his bishop. So I'm up three pawns. And this time I'll try to remember not to forget about my king. Um, but also I might be able to trade queens, so maybe I'm not going to be so concerned about that. So, yeah, technically it is Saturday. All right, so now what? Fine, we're going to play the boring move. Just in case I happen to, like, mess up, this will give my king one escape square. Um... Put the rook on a good square. Right, so he puts his king forward, which should give me some ability to attack him somehow. In theory. Here, let's put the queen back here. Doubling up on this um, knight. I don't even have the plus time button in this mode. That's too bad. Um, tripling up on the knight. Taking the knight. Yeah. Also, playing with the increment will just help with the time management in general. Alright, let's play something fun. Here's something fun. It's a move. So we're not going to win this through any kind of opening magic. What's my opponent doing? What is this? I don't recognize this opening. Feels like my opponent's leaving a lot up to chance here. Um, perhaps I'm doing the same, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I have trapped in my bishop, but the remainder of my pieces should be pretty active, and there's no way for him to break through on my king's side, so... Yeah, right. So I guess... Usually I expect my opponent to try to do something. It's pretty unusual to have an opponent who just obliges and does nothing. Um, like, the whole point of my doing nothing was to see if he could come up with something and, like, I could hand off the initiative to him and, like, we could have an interesting game here instead of one where I'm attacking the whole time. Um, but he wasn't interested in attacking, so... Uh, instead we get this, where... Look, I've wrestled the initiative out of a position where my opponent chose not to do anything, as opposed to being forced not to do anything. Um, and now we're playing an endgame. Is this really what he wanted? And if so, why? Like, what's so great about this for black? Alright, so he doubles the rooks there. 
So I sidestep. And now I've got complete control of this file. All right. And OK, I see I can't hold on to my A pawn. So there is one weak point in my position. Great. Um, so I'll try to force him to focus on his weakness here. Right, I expected that. That's the most natural reply. I don't think it's a good reply. Which is why I tried to induce it. Um, because now I take here and I push a3, and I just win this pawn. And there wasn't a way to stop that, which is why I played rook b8. Um, and I was just double checking what I was looking at there, because, yeah, this, I don't get what my opponent did here. He's just letting me have a free hand to just kill him, so that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to pin my bishop, because that would be silly. Um, instead, we'll just go around and start taking everything. Uh, can I trade the bishop for the knight and still win this? I don't think so. I think I have to keep my bishop. Which is better than his knight. It's like night and day how excellent my bishop is compared to how unfortunate his knight is in this position. Um, okay, so now to win this, I've got to play lots of good moves. Just kidding, I just have to find one good move. Because it's a really good one. The threat is just to liquidate the rooks, and having removed the rooks from the board, the outcome is pretty obvious. Even if my opponent doesn't hang the pawn, that's just like super impractical for black to try to hold, and I'm pretty sure I have a forced win in any event. But here the forced win is much more obvious. Alright, we'll take that. No respect. <laughs> uh, like I deserve it. You saw what I did earlier in some games. Okay, fine. So we're going to attack this game. Because my opponent has no interest in... Okay, we're going to play this. If this doesn't provoke him to attack, what will? <laughs> there we go. He's avoiding the main theory with pawn d4. There it is. There is no reason to avoid it. Um, you just have to be aware of this one thing which evidently my opponent was not aware of. And that's going to put some pressure on his position. But I've played this maybe a hundred times as black. Um, I never really... Well, no, I did try to study it at one point, but we know how good I am with opening repertoires and remembering what I studied, right? Um... There's just so many nuances, and I certainly haven't grasped them yet. So, what have we here? Alright, so I just take the pawn. Boop! Alright, so... Ignoring what he's doing... International Dateline... Oh! I forgot about that. Yeah, maybe at some point... Oh, you're saying, yeah, westward of where I'm at, it might not be Saturday yet, due to the international date line. I thought I had that figured out, but evidently I have something not correct in my understanding about things. 
Um, okay, he's a te uh, I probably want to save the knight. Just kidding about that whole, like, rook here tactic, trying to, like, win this rook. There's no reason to go there. This is so much better. Hey, I get the rook anyway. Nice. Hmm. You know what? Forget that. Take my rook. You want it that badly? Have it. I'm a nice person. And in no way planning diabolical things here. But no, this endgame is just so excellent that, like, I'm not even going to try to preserve my rook. Yeah, no, that's bad. You had to, like... Oh, well, wait. I thought there was a way to preserve both pieces. I was not thinking clearly. There, yeah, no, I was just winning a piece. Oops. <laughs> it's no reason for me to be a jerk about it or anything then. Um, I'm more of a jerk about it when I have to give back the material and have to fight on in some stupid endgame. Um, here, this is actually a pretty de decent endgame. Here, are you going to push the pawn and check me, or are you just going to like let me just take it directly? Here, I don't have to be a jerk, because I am up material, and this should be pretty easy. That's a pawn, that's a pawn... Okay. There goes the That's a Pawn song. Alright. Here's a move. That looks fun. Let's take that. Take that. How's this supposed to go again? Like, knight f3 and... I don't remember that part of it. Um... I was hoping my opponent could, like, push me to better learn how to play this. Um, because I've had some pretty catastrophic positions with the black pieces. So I was hoping that, like, I could lose it with the white pieces and figure out what it is that I'm doing wrong with black. Um, but I don't think I'm going to lose this, so... Oh well. <laughs> I tried trying to learn. Um, Alright, so... Yeah, it's still Friday in Western U.S. Oh! I forgot, I might have Western U.S. viewers. Not everybody's watching the Game's Done Quick thing. Um, furthermore, despite it being quite late, Technically, it is not yet Saturday in some places. I see. I see the error of my ways, and I stand corrected. Uh, what? Boop. I realize I'm playing quickly, and this is putting my opponent in time pressure because they picked a time control where there's no increment. Um, but, come on. <laughs> Alright, so we'll take one of these, and if he brings the rook out, we'll take one of those. Or, yeah, if he brings the queen out, I'm still tempted to take the bishop. I should probably try to castle first. I'm not so scared of the rook, but this queen scares me. Because, like, it can hit the rook immediately, so... I'm trying to get a tempo so I can just castle and just be up a piece. Um... 
Yes, yeah, so I can just castle. There we go. Problem solved. Whoops. Um, okay. Uh, I've defended my center pawn in the weirdest way possible. And maybe my knight goes back here. Probably not, but... Like, if I do rook takes, they push their pawn. That's a free attack for them. Hmm. I still think I want to see that. Right. So now I just go back. And if they push back, I just return my knight back to where it was. Otherwise, uh, I activate my queen. Oh yeah, no, it totally opens that diagonal to his king. But his king's not going to be sitting there for very long. It's going to be pushing uh, onto either h7 or h8. Um, what I was counting on here is that... Um, well, dang, he's taking my d-pawn. Because I'm careless. Oops. Um... Wait. <sighs> I've got four pieces attacking this pawn. And yet I'm concerned about him attacking me. Why am I so concerned? I don't know. I just thought with four active pieces I'd have enough that he'd actually have to develop one of these two before going after my king or going after my pawn. Um, I thought I'd be able to stir up so much activity that like, he'd have to deal with my threats first. Evidently he doesn't have to actually deal with my threats and can just make moves. Yeah. Alright, thanks for games. Yeah. Alright, so uh, Dauphin here has been if I've read that correctly, he's been patiently waiting. So, um, yeah, sorry I don't see the challenge queue in this Zen mode. I haven't yet set up anything like with my chat bot to recognize when challenges come in. Um, let's see, Z for Zen mode allows me to, okay. Yeah, Dolphin76. All right, we're just going to play a good Sicilian game. I think this is again 3-0, so I should keep the pace quick. Oh boy, I don't know this. I, despite being like rated 1950, um, I know how much I don't know, and it's kind of alarming. Um. <laughs> this feels wrong, but I don't know what to do. So I'm going to have to try to resolve everything through tactical means because I don't know what I'm doing. And then we'll have to back up sometime after the game and figure out what I should have been doing. So my whole point is that he's got to do g-pawn takes and try to transition into something that looks a little bit more familiar to me. Although I'm down like three tempi or something here. I'm getting a position where I've played this structure as black. So at least I'll have some idea what I should be doing. This is pretty unfortunate. I 
again, I resort to tactical means because I don't have anything else here. Oh, cool. Yeah, some of them are probably more instructive than others. I think in general... I don't know, I just got a sense that we were drifting through most of those games, and we there wasn't an increment, so a lot of bad moves were made by both players. Um, so I'm not sure how instructive those are going to be. Um, but yeah, it was interesting playing. Uh, this is much more instructive, at least to me, because I'm getting killed here. My opponent clearly has some idea what he's doing, and I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. And there's no increments, so I'm just going to lose on time, but I've accepted that already. The real question is, can I get an interesting game before my time expires? Yeah, it seems like you got a good grasp of what was going on there. I'm not saying you have to like memorize openings or anything to become good at chess. Um, it seems like if you pick some systems and like you try to stick with it and not choose a random opening every game like I do, um, you'll probably learn more quickly than I learned. So I'm just going to try to take here as many times as I can and try to get to his king if I have any way to get to it. Um. He's got a threat on my back row, so I have to deal with that. I give my king two escape squares because one isn't going to be enough here. I need the second escape score, I'm pretty sure. Um, didn't think I'd get this move in for free. Uh, do I have to sack? Not just yet. Keep the pieces on a bit longer. I have a legal move here? Oh, there it is. I have a legal move here. What is my... Oh, king... No? King g5. Okay, there it is. Um... Yeah, no, like I said, uh, 25 moves ago, I accept that I'm losing this on time. And that's what happened this game. Um, the real question is what happened in the opening. Usually I don't ask these questions um, in, a, in enough of a sense that I need to go back and actually look closely at it. But here it's pretty obvious I played some pretty terrible moves. Um, so first of all, is bishop g5 right? g4. 
G4 is the Kara's attack, isn't this? This is the thing that, like, I'm interested in studying. But um, unless I actually put in the effort, it's not going to happen. But no, I. this is what caused me to flinch after I played the bishop out, is that no, I should have played G4. Uh, what's so appealing about this? Uh, I, I played with a... 2D board for like two years on this site and eventually when I went to a real chess club and tried playing in a real chess set I just couldn't do it and this helps me in so far as when I go to a real chess club and play with a real chess set it makes things easier and I know people don't like the 3D board they completely hate it uh, feedback has been universally negative about it, but um, anyway, so bishop g5 apparently, yeah, black is just better and all this stuff, so if I'm not playing g4, what else can I do? Oh, just develop. Yeah, okay, I can do that. That's fine. Um, but yeah, here I'm just like falling apart. It's pretty terrible. I'm going to bookmark this. Um, yeah, I like the 3D pieces. So we got some challenges. Oh, sorry, I forgot. People like to do the rematch thing after a game, but also other people have queued up in a challenge queue. Really, Leeches should have a way to allow rematches to re-enter the challenge queue. Um, so the streamer could just say, I want to play the next game, and it takes them directly to the next opponent. And they don't have to pick which player they're going to play against. It just queues them up. In the same way that a simul just queues up the games. But, um, I mean, that's my opinion. I didn't make the site, but... Um, I just think the idea of an auto-queuing challenge system would be pretty awesome. But... Um, I saw that coming a mile away, but I thought this position's fine, right? Because the thematic pawn break is d5, but it doesn't do anything here. And if you don't do the thematic pawn break, um, I'm kind of threatening to win material, am I not? At least I can force the break to happen, but... I don't know that I want to force it. I only want to force it if it gains me something to do so. I think this is better, because then he's going to play h6 and g5, and I'll just drop my bishop back to this diagonal, and it'll be okay. Um, now I think it's worth trying to force the issue, now that all my pieces are active. He's going to play his knight somewhere. Um... So, now what is the key question? If bishop takes, I get the free pawn. If pawn takes, I'm pretty sure I'm mating him. So, um, hmm, do I take the pawn? Do I harvest it? I probably do. This isn't very inspiring for white. Yeah, we're just going to try to get an endgame and bail out, because I've played something incorrectly here. And I don't see this going well for me in a middle game. Um, I thought I might have something here. Oh, here we develop. No need to trade pieces. I mean, yeah, he could trade queens to try to win a pawn, but I think I've got it covered. Uh, 
Okay, go ahead, take all my pawns. I'm not watching. <laughs> Oops, there's one. Um, do I have any clever development stuff here? This feels exciting. But also I'm probably just hanging everything. There's pawn number two. Just put the rook on an active square. So I've given away two pawns for something that looks like an attack. It probably is not an attack. But also I'm in time pressure, so uh, I should be forgiven for playing such terrible moves. Um, Oh, that just hangs the knight. I'm good at chess. Maybe. Um, yeah, I have no idea what happened that game. Next game! Oops, I hung a pawn. I'm paying attention. Maybe. Um, Alright, so... Maybe I can get the pawn back. Probably not. See, so, yeah, I have no idea what happened this game. <laughs> Next game? I don't know. That's what happens when I play without an increment. Is that just the games aren't memorable at all. Because I just play such bad moves. Look. I hung my knight. Aren't I great? <laughs> Next game. Uh, clearly I'm in form. Um, no, my opponent's uh, better at openings than I am. I'm getting outclassed here. Um, it's possible he's better in general. Um, I don't know that yet, but it's very possible here. And just that I'm constantly flailing looking for a plan. Um, and my opponent seems to know what they're doing. I've had this exact position before, um, so I have some notion of what's going on, but... Um, wait, am I not just winning a piece? I'm down 15 seconds, but I think being up a piece makes up for it. Yeah, there's always 960. But no, I want to learn stuff. I I don't know why my opponent is so interested in playing me. Like, I don't get why people want to play me on the stream. Um, I don't get what's entertaining or educational or something about that, because most of the time they aren't prepared to play the games. They'll pick time controls where they don't have time to think, and then they'll play bad moves, and then they'll reflect on the moves after the game, and I just don't get it. Like, what's the motivation? I used to do that in Blitz all the time, because, like, I thought I could beat everybody. I thought I was just good enough that, like, I didn't need to play openings. I could just play and win tactically. Um, eventually I realized, like, it's more rewarding to try to play good chess than to just try to win and beat everybody.
There's more to chess than just winning. Yeah, that rook d8 move is kind of a tricky one to find. <laughs> Can't exactly fault my opponent for missing that. Um, there's a check and a mate. We're bookmarking that so that when our opponent makes master, I'll have that one. I'll always have that one on record. That I always beat this player in some silly blitz game because they made a mistake in their opening play and I just accidentally exploited it. So I've played this opening more times than I can count. Um, and I generally understand how to equalize against it. All right, so can I win a piece? We have, the book is queen a4. Um, can I win material here somehow? Hmm. I mean, certainly I've equalized. You're drinking carrot and mango juice. You just thought you let the chat know. Cool. Which is better, the carrot juice or the mango juice? Um, oh, his rook covers e2. That's too bad. Oh, the mango, obviously. Yeah, right, right, yeah, it's a mixed drink. It dawned on me after I asked the question. Um, I still thought it was a funny question, though. So I didn't correct myself. Um, yep, 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 so... I don't know how, but I managed to out-prep my opponent this opening. And I'm just playing solidly throughout. Um, and this is kind of rewarding because I'm actually enjoying that, like, I've played a good game. In spite of the fact that I'm down a minute. And there's a still a very good chance I might lose this on time because of the time situation, but um, it's still an entertaining game. Okay, his king is stuck taking that. And then I can put my king in front so he can't push d5. And then make sure he can't hit the base of my pawn chain. And then I want to blockade his doubled pawns and take the center square and guard my base of my pawn chain. Um, meanwhile, yes, yeah, so I've got, I think, all the entrance points covered. Oh, wait. I've done something quite sinister here. That's called a rook sandwich. Um, yeah, no, I just am basically up a rook. I've pulled this maneuver over the board in, like, game 60. Where, like, my opponent's rook has nowhere to go, right? They can do whatever they want. But my rook has freedom, and theirs does not. Right, so I can... No, eh, I don't want to draw. Why would I want to draw? I've got a rook and you don't. <laughs> this is fun. We're going to play this.
And see now I go back and I just take the pawns. I'm basically upper rook. It's wonderful. Don't sandwich your rook in front of your pawns like that. Okay, so now I can zugzwang him. I'm not sure I have a meaningful zugzwang, but um, if I did, I'd totally be winning this. Uh, hang on, my rook belongs on b1. There it is. There's the zugzwang. I found it. That wasn't so hard. It took me a second because of the time pressure thing, but now we just play the rook here. Now go back. And whatever. Um, let's put the rook over here. Check. Check. Yeah, it's beautiful, because, again, like, it's the recurring theme, right? Free rook. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now we have to go through with all this formality. That was fun. We're going to bookmark that. Somehow, um, I accidentally outprepped my opponent. Although that was an Italian opening, wasn't it? Like, that was this thing. And then that was this thing, and then the knight there, and then this thing. And then I play this line. Which is just ridiculous. This is, like... Experts will tell you don't play this because it's bad. But I play it in Blitz because it's fun. Chess is fun. Um, but it's also, like, extremely theoretical nonsense. That, like... You could study it all day, and it's still not enough to bail you out. Um, am I winning a piece? Oh, man. This looks fun. <laughs> um, hmm. What's going on here? Like, this, uh, so this knight c3 variation of the Italian opening, um, like I said, it's extremely dicey. Um, and I would not recommend it for tournament play. As much fun as I've had with it over the years, as many really easy victories as I've scored against unprepared opponents, it's just not a good opening. Um, but, man, in Blitz Chess, it, you can get so much active play with this. Like, why would you ever play anything else? So that's why I don't know most openings, is because like, I spent all my time on this one opening. And it's great. It scores points. But um, my chest would be far better served if I studied real openings. So there's that. No, I mean, this actually, like, modern chess openings does discuss this. Um in far rosier terms than I describe it. Um, and it very well might be right that maybe this is playable, but I don't know. Chess is hard. And this spending all your time on this opening is not going to make chess any easier. Um, oops, don't want to hang that. Hmm, this is unfortunate.
Oh, am I forcing? Yeah. Basically asking my opponent to play rook b8 there. Um, because otherwise I'm threatening rook e7. Um... I'm kind of out of ideas, which is why I'm shuffling. I don't like shuffling because it's kind of... I don't know. I'd rather try to win the game by uh, playing good moves than by shuffling. But, um... Because uh, each time I shuffle, there's a chance that I've missed something critical. I'd rather try to find that if I can. But also the time situation here calls for me to keep moving. So keep moving as shell. Um, hmm. Probably should have done rook takes, although that inspires f5 or induces f5. Okay, I got f5 in. This is awesome. This is amazing. This kind of changes the character of everything that's going on in this position because of that. f5 I got in. Um, okay, I'll trade. You've convinced me. Oh, wow. He's not serious. Did I seriously force bishop b6 to happen here? Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Um... I should have done king d5. I'm not going to miss it twice. Okay. Should have done this. Not going to miss it twice. Was a beautiful mate and totally undeserved um, but we'll take it that's what three minute without an increments all about is just winning so uh, let's see castles oh yeah there's this stuff too I forget how this goes that's not a good sign for my tournament repertoire I should look into what's going on here Um, so I castle, and if knight takes, pawn takes, I'm fine. Wait, this is... What's white doing in this position? It feels like black is solidified without much problem. Um, so now black starts attacking? Question mark? This is probably far more aggressive than what my opponent expected. Um, so I'll take the bishop in this nice wide open position. That doesn't give me an edge, but... Um, 
because my pawn structure is fragmented. Um, I wish I had a way to like sack the pawn and activate my pieces simultaneously. I don't have such a thing. Oops, that's not where I meant to drop it. Well, that's going to make things a little more challenging. Yep, that one mouse slip is going to kill me. Oh well. Oh wait, I'm down two pawns. Yeah, let's not even try. Like, why try that? Alright, so... What happened this game? I thought I knew what I was doing. And then... Something happened here that was very much out of the ordinary. Like, I always see pawn takes pawn here. And the fact that my opponent didn't play that has me very confused. Um, okay, castles is the move. Apparently this has been played in two master games, and in both occasions black won. So, c3... Oh, god. I just take this. Right. And then this is d5, rook e1, and so forth. I'm not remembering any of this theory, but, um, yeah, this, so this, yeah, this is just better. Huh. Uh, I work with software design, development, analysis, and such, um, for a living. So that keeps me gainfully employed and helps out a lot of people with good real world problems that they have to be solved. But yeah, I deal with software. YOLO! <laughs> this is provocative. This is extremely provocative. Um. But it's not refuted, so I play it, and we have fun. <laughs> um. So, yeah, maybe this will be the last one. Um... For reasons that are becoming increasingly obvious. <laughs> um. Although perhaps I'm not the only one playing bad moves here. Um. But either way, a lot of bad moves are occurring. A lot of that three minute without increment has gotten to me. It's instilled in me a habit of move first think later. And I think that's enough of that for today. Um, we did see that when people challenged me, I took the challenges which had the increment first, and then I took the other challenges. But um, really, I probably need to take on a policy of just not playing games that have no increment, other than the bullet nonsense they occasionally do. Um, because we just got a lot of really meaningless games there, as, as well as a lot of meaningful games, but I just found it frustrating having to play games where neither player had any idea what was going on throughout the course of the entire game. It seems like there's more to chess than that, and I just kind of missed um, being able to play good moves. And it's like here I played e5, and I've done that before. Uh, it's certainly playable. Um, but this is just bad habits that I've not managed to develop my pieces. Yeah, so I'm just going to put my king here next to my pawns. And my opponent's up a pawn with a very nice... Um, even though all his pawns are in light squares, they're excellently placed. 
Um, <sighs> my only pawn breaks are f4 and c4, and they're both pretty sad pawn breaks to make. But if I don't make a pawn break, how am I going to get my pieces out? Maybe h5 is a pawn break, but it doesn't look promising. I'm going to push this. I'm going to regret this later because the C pawn is almost certainly dead on C4. But uh, my position was dead in any event, so I needed something to activate my pieces. The Doctor is becoming the president of the Time Lords, so he can access the Matrix. Great! That's excellent information to be aware of. And I'm sure it's entirely factually accurate. Um, okay, I'm going to trade off my doubled pawn. And he gets rid of his doubled pawn, sure. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to prevent him from immediately castling that way. Really, what he should just do is king d8, king c7. And, like, there's no problems for black at all. But he went the wrong way. So, this gives me something to hope for. Not much, but something. Yep, yep, yep. So that's funny. Stay Hydrated Bot does occasionally show up here, but hasn't said anything. Um, despite the fact that I've like repeatedly configured it to say things, it's the only thing it's saying is that you can configure me, which is a pretty weird thing for it to repeat. Um, uh, I've got to play rookie one. This is awkward. This is super awkward. But I'm not going to double my pawns in a position where we don't have bishops on the board. Yeah, probably stay hydrated bots watching Doctor Who. And just, like, isn't super paying attention to what's going on here. So e4 is the natural and probably best... Well, no, it drops the pawn. Um, so... I've actually got some activity in this position. Um, right, so he does that. Oh, I can't win a pawn. But I can liquidate my pawn that was on the H file. And then this pawn. And then having liquidated some pawns, my remaining pieces are active. And his are not. Right, so he's making a bid for activity and probably managing to get active pieces here. Oh, I don't know about that one, though. I don't know about that one. That seems too optimistic to me. seems like that blows the winning chances he had here. Oh, my rook's attacked. I can't just ignore that. Wow! Really? Is that really what you wanted to do? Okay.
I'm shuffling here because I know this is drawn. Um, I will not be impressed if I manage to lose this. Isn't this exciting? Okay, I can actually start to target that now. Alright, that looks pretty drawish to me, I think. Alright, we got the rematch offer. <laughs> Note that Leech has immediately decided the draw on that particular position because neither player can win it. Um, that's something I spent quite a while trying to code correctly. And in some cases that is easily detectable. Um, although I don't think I did the initial incarnation of that particular code. Alright, so we're going to put my king over on b7. We have diverged from theory because I forgot to play h6. I've played too much Blitz chess today. I have to slow down a little bit. Yeah, right. With uh, opposite square color bishops, um, the mate is possible, but in that particular configuration, mate is not possible. Um. Still gonna tuck my king in on b six, b seven, whatever. Um, I mean, I'm probably clearly losing this because I've diverged so far from book. It would not surprise me if, like, objectively, this is lost. Um, I'm not saying it'd be easy to prove that it's lost, but. If this actually does happen to be... Oh, never mind. There we go. That was easy. Um, I think I've unsettled my opponent. But I'm curious what in the world went on there. Let's take a look at the analysis board. As a polite way of declining a rematch. So, I played knight f5. We traded. My opponent plays knight c3. I played bishop e6. Normally here, I think I play h6. Masters play a lot of moves here, don't they? Yeah, but no, my typical move that I play here is h6. I should have, that should have occurred to me. Um, wow. This is like the Berlin defense that I've spent a long time studying, and then when it came time to play it in the actual Blitz game, I just didn't have the composure to play it. Um, so, with that said, let me find us um, somebody to host. Um, certainly learned a lot from what we've played here today. So it's, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get to the challenge right now. Um, so yeah, it was a good experience. We've learned a lot playing today. It's been fun. Um, let's see, oh, um, yeah, there's the charity event. So for what that's worth, I'm just going to host the charity event. So, uh, thanks for watching, it's been fun, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good night.